In this video, we'll learn how we can lock down texture projections using texture reference objects here inside of Maya. Okay, so I have a very simple scene set up. I simply have created two planes uh, and created a material for each one of them. Now for this plane on the left, I have here a material using a 3D texture. You can see I've drugged the projection manipulator off to the left here. Now remember, the projection manipulator controls the size and placement of a 3D texture. Now for this piece of geometry on the right, I've created this material using a 2D texture, but this 2D texture is being applied as a projection. And you can see that projection manipulator here. Now one thing that we talked about in a previous video is when we're using projection to apply a texture is the issue of texture swimming. If I was to grab this piece of geometry here and begin to drag it, you can see here how the texture is moving. The texture is actually staying stationary while we're moving the geometry. It's not moving with the geometry. And that is for the 2D texture, and the same goes for the 3D texture. You can see here that texture is staying stationary while we're moving the geometry, and it's giving it this strange sliding or swimming effect. Now, when you're dealing with geometry that is going to deform, now whether that's using deformers or bones and joints, uh, this is going to become an issue. And it's an issue that you're going to have to figure out how to solve. So let me show you what I've got here. For these two pieces of geometry, I've applied a simple nonlinear blend deformer here. And if I came over and grabbed this bend, and we'll just use the curvature as an example here. And I'll go ahead and control middle click in my viewport so I can begin dynamically adjusting that attribute. You can see how that texture is swimming. Now, the portion of the geometry that's really not moving much, the texture is not being adjusted. But out here towards the edges of the geometry where the bend is more pronounced, the swimming is also more pronounced. So I'll come in here and zero that curvature value out. And I want to show you that the same thing goes for this 2D texture as well. I've got another nonlinear bend applied to that plane. And if I come over here and begin to curve that, you're noticing here that towards the edges that are being deformed more, uh, we're getting more and more pronounced swimming of the texture. So this is a very simple illustration, but it, it does illustrate the problem quite well. So uh, we do have some tools inside of Maya to help us deal with a problem like this one, though. Now, it's called a texture reference object. And in order to create one of these, what we're going to need to do is select our geometry, and we'll come up here and make sure that we're in the rendering menu set. Now once we're there, we can come over here to the texturing menu, and we can choose to create a texture reference object right here. Now as soon as I create that texture reference object, you'll notice here that it looks like the wireframe for my plane has gone to pink color. But really what that is, is that is the texture reference object laying right on top of our plane. As a matter of fact, let me come over here and use my move tool, and I'll just move that out of the way. I'm going to pull that out in front of the plane just like so. Now once we deselect that, we won't be able to select the texture reference object inside the viewport. It's not meant to be selected unless we wanted to find it inside the outliner. So if I open up my outliner here and drag this over, you can see my texture reference object right here can be selected. And there it is. I'll go ahead and deselect it right now and minimize that for the time being. Now, this is where we're going to have to understand that the viewport is giving us a representation of what's going on in our scene, but it is not the ultimate judge. Now, when it comes to texture reference objects, the default viewport inside of Maya, Viewport 2.0, uh, is not going to show us how this texture reference object is locking down our texture. As a matter of fact, now that I've created this, this texture should not swim at all when I come over here and I bend our deformer. 
Let me come over here and just do this. However, you can see clearly it is actually appearing that our texture is swimming. This is not correct though. This is something you need to understand about Viewport 2.0. It doesn't really support this. So we can come over here and change our Viewport renderer. Let's come over here and look at Legacy High Quality Viewport. We'll go ahead and make that change here. Now if I were to come over to this piece of geometry, select the bend, and come in and bend that. Remember this one does not have a texture reference object created yet. We can begin to drag that and you can see how that texture is still swimming here. I'll go ahead and zero that out. But now when we come over here and maybe grab this deformer that was on the 3D texture and begin to adjust that curvature value, you can see how the texture is locking down and it's no longer moving around or swimming near the edges of our geometry here. So that's pretty cool, right? Let's go ahead and zero that out. And if we wanted to, we could always come in here for our 2D texture and do the same thing. Texturing, create texture reference object. I'll go ahead and move that out and away. Just like so. And now when we come in and grab our bend deformer, adjust that curvature attribute, you can see now that texture is locked down. We're not getting any kind of swimming at all. So these texture reference objects are really very useful. Essentially what these are doing is it's creating sort of a proxy of our geometry that's serving as a recipient for the texture projection. And that texture is then being transferred over to the target geometry. In this case, we're using a couple of very simple pieces of geometry in these planes, but these same techniques can be applied to more complex pieces of geometry. Now, if at any point we wanted to come in and delete our texture reference objects, uh, we could do that a couple of ways. We could find them inside the outliner and delete them there, or we could simply come in, select our piece of geometry. We could come up to that same texturing menu and choose to delete the texture reference object, just like so. And as soon as I do, you can see that uh, texture reference object disappeared. And if we came back over here and adjust our curvature again, you can see we're back to our swimming textures. So uh, again, when you're working with texture projections, whether it is a 2D or a 3D projection on any kind of geometry that is going to deform, swimming of that texture is going to be an apparent issue that will creep into your final renders. And it needs to be accounted for. Texture reference objects are one solution to that problem.